Nice. Oh, I love that. Ooh. Hello, welcome to this video. My name's Dan, aka Liz, and I'm a singer, songwriter, music producer person. Got a haircut. And today I'm going to be reacting to a bunch of Lana Del Rey's unreleased songs. So let's go. Hello. People have been asking me to react to these songs for ages, right? There's like a whole bunch of unreleased stuff. I guess it's like stuff that was demos, stuff that was leaked, stuff that didn't make it onto the album for whatever reason, but loads of people seem to really, really love these extra songs. I'm hoping they're going to add like an extra layer to my understanding of Lana as an artist, kind of see like the whole process. So I put out the question on Patreon to ask you guys which ones I should listen to and so I picked six songs from all of those suggestions thank you guys who replied to that if you want to join the patreon and be part of that community then make sure to click on the link in the description as you can probably hear in my voice I've been ill a week <laughs> I'm still a bit stuffy but I'm feeling much better it's all good it's all good did you uh, enjoy that song that you heard in the intro Oh, you did? Wow. That's so great to hear. That was actually my song. That was Neon. And if you want to check it out, the link is in the corner and the link is in the description to stream it too. Yay. <laughs> if you're new to the channel, then make sure to subscribe um, and make sure to check out all my other Lana Del Rey content. I recently did my reaction to Did You Know There's a Talent Under Russian Boulevard, which was fucking insane. But yeah, I've done all of her big albums. So yeah, check those out. Uh, the first song we've got is Fine China. So let me just get it set up. Let's do this. So today I'm going to be covering six. So I'm going to be covering six of her unreleased songs. If there are any other ones they have to listen to, make sure to leave a comment and I'll do a follow up video at some point. Ooh. Interesting. Oh, I like that. I wore diamonds for the birth of your baby. Oh right, okay. I like the plucked strings, harp. Oh wow, okay, so the parallel between one starting and one ending. Mm. I really like the kind of uh, raw nature of it, really. Her voice sounds brilliant, you know, even without much on it, you know? The imagery of the fine china is supposed to be like a happy house, right? I really like this. This is lovely, but quite sad, you know. I wonder why it didn't make it to the album. Which album was this one supposed to be on? One love begins, one comes undone. There's like a certain sense of like the universe at work with that, you know? The dresses with the tags still on them. I think it's about like the expectation of this relationship that she had with this person that was gonna last for a long time and seeing it come undone, you know? I feel like the fine china represents like, you know, a gift, like a gift in marriage, right? And so it kind of comes to represent like a long lasting lifetime commitment. And I think she's kind of like lamenting the loss of that, especially in kind of sharp comparison to these other people whose love story is just beginning, you know? still on. See that suggests that she bought those dresses thinking that she was gonna have to take them back. You know there's almost like a sense of like she knew it wasn't gonna last. The fresh linen's another sign of domesticity isn't it you know. So <laughs> like someone was taking a call in the middle of that, I don't know. Yeah, really, really, really appreciated that. I thought there was some beautiful lyricism. I'll look at the lyrics in full in a sec, so if there's things I missed. But I really appreciate like how stripped back it was. Obviously, the reason it's stripped back is because it was it's not fully finished, right? But like the rawness in it, I don't know, added like added like a real delicate thing to it that I thought was really lovely. 
the demo-ish nature of it makes it even more vulnerable, which is really nice. I wonder why I didn't make whatever album. Well, I don't know what album it was supposed to be. I wonder why I didn't make it, because it is really nice song. Hmm. Hmm. I like it. I wore diamonds for the birth of your baby, for the birth of your son, on the same day my husband, husband to be practiced things to run. It was bittersweet to say the least. One life begins, one comes undone. It's like this sense that she believes that like she's going to have a long lasting relationship. She has faith that, that she's going to have that, but she's always unlucky with whoever she falls in love with, um, which is kind of a recurring thing that we've seen in Lana's stuff, especially early days, you know. Yeah, that lyric, all my dresses with a tag still on them, there's an element of self-fulfilling prophecy, you know, maybe she's, she's choosing these kind of bad men and she kind of knows somewhere on some subliminal level that it's not going to work out, you know, she hasn't taken the tags off, she's expecting to return these clothes. They said that love was enough, but it wasn't. The earth shattered, the sky opened and the rain was fire. The rain was fire, but we were wooden. We were stuck. We were waiting to burn to the ground. I wore diamonds for the day of our wedding, for for our day in the sun. On the same day, my mother to be said she wouldn't come. Oh right, it's always been that way with me. No time for change, no time for fun. It's always been that way. It seems one love begins, another comes undone. Okay, yeah. So that second verse seems to be looking back at at the relationship and seeing, you know, there was always a sense of like one love beginning and one coming undone. Like the universe is telling her that this isn't working because there's always something to balance out the happiness, you know. She can never quite have it all. And then the central kind of image of the fine china really does represent that long lasting marriage that has never happened. Yeah, like that a lot. That's really good. Okay, next song. What have we got? Velvet Crowbar. So we've got some really jangly guitars. So this is where the demo nature of it needs a bit of work. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Mm. Nice. I love her voice there. I love that imagery. You're bleeding, but you want more. Yeah, this one really does feel like low quality. <laughs> I really like it, though. There's like a kind of femme fatale kind of energy to it. Uh, addicted and you were a dick yeah it's clever I love her like wordplay the way that she kind of has like dual meanings within phrases I love the way that the um, the 6-8 nature of it really kind of like has like a real driving feeling to it especially in the way that she's written that melody over the top it's like yeah, love her. Mm. Yeah, nice. Those guitars are just so overbearing, aren't they? They really need pairing back. <laughs> I like the kind of like old rock kind of feel of it. Like this one feels like it could fit in with like maybe ultraviolence stylistically. Nice. I like that one. That one has so much style. It was oozing style. You know, really felt like that kind of vibe. I love the imagery of this velvet crowbar, something that's like heavy, metallic, like a blunt weapon but like covered in velvet, like it's kind of unassuming, like it's in disguise, like it's like, here I am, I'm soft and I'm sultry and then I'm sexy, but actually like it's gonna hit you over the head and leave you bleeding on the floor, you know? It's such an interesting imagery, so, so, so cool. It's such a Lana, <laughs> it's such a Lana piece of like imagery, you know? Like, I don't know anyone else who would come up with that. <laughs> and then throw it away. You know, like that's really, yeah, that's what's kind of crazy about both these songs is that they weren't, they weren't pursued, which I think is so random. They're so great. That one needed a lot more work. Like I, like I wish there was a version where the guitars weren't so like in your ear. They're like, you know, but like still the bones of that song are so great. 
I love the arrangement of it. I love the fact that it's in 6-8 and I love the way that she's created that melody over the top to kind of like really give it that kind of like wave and flow and build, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I was addicted to you, but I didn't know it. You were afflicted by booze. You didn't show it. Life is a velvet crowbar hitting you over the head. You're bleeding, but you want more. This is so like you, I said. Put yourself back to bed. The imagery of this crowbar is an unhealthy love addiction. And on the other side, a booze addiction. Things that seem very enticing, people that seem very enticing, a love that seems very enticing, it's all velvety, but actually it's hiding a kind of hidden truth of its crowbar nature. The the alcoholism, the danger in this person. So cool, I love it. That's like such a brilliant metaphor for this. You want to touch life so hard, why can't you give it a rest? You're not that bright for a star. You burned yourself out, nothing left. Okay, so this, so this person that she's falling in love with is really like, the alcoholism has like burned him bright and fast and now he's just a wreck. She's starting to see how washed up this, this guy really is, you know. Life is a velvet crowbar hitting you over the head. You're bleeding syrup are more bleeding to death. So she's kind of turned it and saying that like maybe he's now been hit with a velvet crowbar. I love this idea of bleeding syrup. It ha It's the same kind of juxtaposition of the velvet and the crowbar, like blood being syrup, being like sweet, that same oxymoronic kind of thing going on. Love it, really clever imagery. Okay, let's go on to the next one. This is Dragon Slayer. This is definitely higher quality, this one. Mm, nice chords. Ooh. I love the way that guitar comes out over the top, that's really cool. Her eyes are green and her heart is gold And so you're walking down that road mm. 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 This character seems to be some sort of siren, mermaid kind of character, I think. A Lolita, probably. <laughs> because to you she feels like home I love the arrangement of this song, even though it's simple and unreleased, obviously like a demo version. I just love the, the soundscape. It's very rich, very romantic. It's enticing. It's very dreamlike. Mm. Oh, there you go. <laughs> She's always got to mention Lolita. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. She feels free. This one really feels like it's so rich in storytelling. I really like this. I really like it. I wonder who this person is, though. And I wonder who the dragons are that she's slaying. Ancient saint of troubled daughters. Mm. So she's some sort of saviour character. Not sure. Prayer. <laughs> Yeah, I like that a lot. A lot of like religious context. It's giving me like Spanish leaning like Catholicism. You know, there's a mention of like Maria. There's like this it's almost like holy figure that she's idolizing within that song. And like the music itself kind of gives that old kind of like tale feeling to it the kind of guitar and the light strings and stuff and the way that all kind of merges together it gives me this like almost like yeah like, like like a kind of holy kind of feeling yeah it's really like not what i expected from a song called dragon slayer which is obviously much more ferocious but that's a really really cool like kind of setting up your expectation thing again like why why is this song not on one of the albums like it's so good the production in that one i think like for me was like the real killer like uh, that was that was great really really nice and for a demo like it didn't even need much work yeah mad she is a spanish senorita her eyes are green and her heart is gold it's some kind of benevolent holy woman you know you have a vision you'd like to meet her and so you're walking down that road to the sea see that's why it's giving me like mermaid siren vibes you hear a lot of things about her, her reputation is widely known the people talk but that doesn't matter because to you she feels like home you feel free because she'll never bring you down it's almost like the perfect woman that's like been built up in people's minds and 
Maybe this person isn't actually real. She'll never bring you down. You're hot, then she'll bring you water. She wears a flower crown. She's the people's daughter. She's holy, holy. Maria's prayer, the dragon slayer. Oh, Maria's prayer. That's why she says it like that, the dragon slayer. She's fighting fire by the sea. There's almost like a sense of like folk tale and they're believing a folk tale. Patriot state of troubled daughters, hold your light and you have it true. So it's like some aspirational figure who seems to be fighting off the baddies for all these people who seems to be having troubles herself, you know. She's, so she's ultimately this very relatable character. I wonder, like, if it's supposed to represent anyone in specific or whether she's... Te maybe she's retelling, a t like, a story. I'm not sure. You have to let me know. But, yeah, really like that. Really, really nice. Let's see the next one. This is Driving in Cars with Boys. <laughs> Which is giving me very Lizzie Grant energy. <laughs> It's giving me very like, is it Motown? Yeah, it is Motown, isn't it? Love the chords. They say time. They say that I'm no nice. This is like halfway between Lizzie Grant and nice. And like a kind of more vintage. Maybe this was like them experimenting with her sound. Cause it's also got like castanets and stuff. So it's very like, everything. Yeah, love the chords. This is fun. This is much more like rock and roll. Nice. Drinking in the white noise. I love that chord movement there, those between those two. It's that bum, bum, bum. It's reminding me of like hairspray. <laughs> but it's like that is in turn referencing that kind of era of 60s rock and roll, Motown, all those genres. Nice. No fast die young, yeah, so it's definitely like born to die vibes, isn't it? <laughs> this could fit on Born to Die, huh? Nice. I think, like, Born to Die ended up referencing this era musically a little bit less. So maybe that, maybe this was like an attempt at, like, taking the music to this place, you know, like, to this kind of genre. Love it. It's great. Nice. I love that. That was great. That was really good. This might be completely wrong, but it, like to me it sounds as if it could be between Lizzie Grant and Born to Die because it's definitely like got elements of Lizzie Grant, you know, like the gas station queen and what, you know, it's like that. But it also kind of fits in like musically with like the kind of era that Born to Die was really evoking. So this one to me, we're still trying to figure out exactly what is going to be the killer thing for Lana. You know, she's still throwing things at the wall. And I really like that she's done a song in this style. Like I really enjoy it. Like there's a few different like merging of genres, but it works out in, like, in, in a really cool kind of retro kind of way that I really like. Driving in cars with boys. They say I'm wasting time. They say that I'm no good. Summer of my life, not doing what I should. Call me Poison Ivy because I'm far from good, but pretty from afar like a dark star. All this drive by love got me crazy like a drug. It's almost like this person who's like, you know, almost like trying on the persona, searching out like a grittier lifestyle for themselves, you know. That seems to be suggested in like the way that like the people around her are saying that she's wasting her time, you know. Spent my whole life driving in cars with boys, riding around town, drinking in the white noise. Used to talk about where we be and where we go. Now we know, baby, now we know. So it's about like, kind of almost like finding your purpose, but like in that moment of like hedonistic kind of drunk driving around, like having a great time in that moment, it's like, I know what my life's purpose is, you know, in the hangover, that's probably not going to be uh, quite as convincing that it seems to be capturing a moment, you know, mommy's Mercedes or Billy's pickup truck come home late at night and baby picks me up, tell him to drive on and don't, don't ever stop. Don't take me home again, take me to the new land. So there's there, yeah, there's this idea that she's escaping an old life there as well. I really feel that sense of freedom in it. I was born to live fast, die young. 
there it is, born to die reference. So you can see where her brain's going already. Do you know what I mean? Um, leave a beautiful cri- corpse, live my life on the run. I got my cash, my Louis Vuitton, diamonds and guns. Girls just want to just want to have fun. In this moment, being like, I know how I want to live my life. I want to burn fast and I want to burn hot. You know, even if I do die young, at least I'll be beautiful. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's really like a Christian kind of vision in that moment. I really like it. That's really, really good. And like, really is showing like the inner workings of like all these different metaphors that she plays into later on. And it's really interesting kind of seeing where like, her mind is gone like finding this vision that we ended up getting presented with in a fully formed way you know yeah fab love it let's go on to the next one this is your girl okay let the vocal work okay There's a kind of feeling of being burnt out here. Never do. I wish I nice. It's really dark and quite rocky. I wish I was your girl. Quite a simple hook. It's giving me ultraviolence vibes. It's a real kind of like wallowing feel here. It's like someone who's like burnt out and is just reduced to the simple fact that all they want is to be this person's girlfriend, you know? It kind of feels like this song really is a demo version because it like feels like it could build into something and it feels like the whole thing is just building that tension and never and hasn't actually reached that moment yet, you know? See that's it's giving me Jimmy Jimmy Cocoa Puff. Jimmy really loved me when he wanna get high. <laughs> you know, it's there. I wish I yeah, it feels like that was a place for the drums to come in or something, you know. I think like this chorus is a bit too simplistic for me. Like it needs a lot of refinement, I feel like this song. I like that vocal work there. Interesting. Yeah. That one I didn't enjoy as much. Like, I felt like it kind of just needed more development. And I think she's written similar songs in that vein, but done it in a much more, like, convincing way. And I think that's probably why they ended up going for those songs rather than that one. Carry Me Off The Stage, I Can't Do This Anymore, Been Gone For Three Years, Is That Enough For You Boy? So that seems to be representing maybe her touring for three years, but she's, like, so burnt out. She just needs to be, she needs to be carried off the stage. You know, she can't even keep herself up. Carry me to my bed, paint my toenails blue. The blue. Blue's a big colour for her, isn't it? Tell me all about the things that you and I will never do. I wish I was your girl. Maybe it's like three years after having broken up with someone and she's still not over them. I do like that she seems to be telling a story with context. You know, she doesn't often like let us in on the context of her real life. And I quite like how she's, you know, telling us a bit more of like where her mind is at, given that she is a touring pop star and how it's affecting this relationship. I do like that element of it. That one definitely needs more development. Not my favourite, but I do appreciate the slightly different angle in the storytelling that I don't think she's ever actually given us. Maybe that was why that song wasn't used. Before I go on to the final song, this is a quick shout out to my patrons. Yay. Thank you guys so much for supporting me and Patreon. This is just one of the benefits you can get over on Patreon. The tiers are as follows. You've got the Crying Club, which you get your name in the video, and you get access to the Discord server. Then on the next tier up, you have the Weeping Wendy's, and they get all their videos unedited. The day that I film them, I upload the unedited version, so they get them early and the full thing without any cuts in any of the songs or anything. And then the Sobbing Susans can actually request a song from me, as well as getting everything below. Um, So I will react to any song you ask of me. You've got the Howling Helens, where I'll do an artist reaction for you, where you can pick four songs from any artist and then you've got the blubbering inconsolable blubbering on the floor mess whatever it is betty uh, and that's the top top tier and that is an album request where i react to any album you ask of me but yes thank you so much for everyone who's supporting me let's go on to the final song i have chosen serial killer 
because, of course. <laughs> wish I may, wish I might find my one true love tonight. Okay. So very Disney like, wishing on a star. Really tight, into a okay, drum machine. Nice, I like the rhythm in it. That string is really cool. Nice. This is giving me Born to Die vibes, right? I love you just a little too much. I love that. It's great. Sweet serial killer. I love that. Amazing, brilliant kind of juxtapositions, oxy oxymorons, you know. This is really great. This has, has proper single energy to me. Yeah. I love this. It's such a good hook. Seems like a little bit rough. Like I feel like that that um, that drum machine sounds like you're literally playing the preset, you know. <laughs> but obviously those things will get developed in a in a in a final version of the song, you know. Love it though. Oh, I love that. That is so cool. I love this image of this like crazed lover sneaking up on you in the night with a with the knife of love. <laughs> it's a really strong concept. <laughs> love it, it's so good. It's the same as a velvet, velvet crowbar, you know, like sweet cereal colour. But it's also like sweet cereal, like so many levels of Lana. <laughs> Maybe this is the reason they wouldn't like they wouldn't let it out is because uh, Nintendo will probably like no, we're not letting you associate the name Game Boy with a serial killer. <laughs> <sighs> It kind of gives me this sense of this character, maybe like a serial data, you know, like dating loads of people, like falling in love with them and then get like getting rid of them and going on to the next one, you know? But in this imagery, it's like she's killing them and then moving on to the next one, you know? It's great. <laughs> I love the sense of urgency in it as well. Sick. That's so good. I love that. That was like such a strong concept, such a strong metaphor for a song. Like this like character who is like, you know, serial dating, you know, but being a serial killer, like, you know, like, falling in love with people um, just to murder them <laughs> and move on to the next one. Like it's really like satisfying imagery that is like really is similar to Velvet Crowbar in the way that it has that kind of oxymoronic thing to it. Yeah, I love it. And then has like the double entendre lyrics, you know, sweet cereal and sweet cereal and like serial killer, you know, merging those two things, you know, it's that something that's unassuming and sweet and beautiful, but actually is going to murder you, you know, it's like, yeah, very good. Brilliant. Yeah. And I love the way the production kind of like layered up these like really urgent kind of like feelings. It almost felt like you should be afraid that someone's going to murder you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a real, that urgency is really evident, which I think is very clever. That one is so fully formed and it feels like a single to me. Like it has a really good hook, something that's gonna like catch people's ear. Like someone, someone singing about being a serial killer has got to be like, got to have like some sort of like, you know, really good, like catchy kind of radio play kind of feel to it. And yeah, there's something so great about that. Wish I may, wish I might find my one true love tonight. Do you think that he could be you? It's like someone like tempting somebody. I know that what I do isn't right I can't stop baby I'm a sociopath sociopath sweet serial killer on the warpath because I love you just a little too much so there's the sense of this person like being so so in love with them that she ruins the relationship before it starts so it could be like as much as the imagery is like you know this kind of serial data kind of person it, like at the center of it she it seems like there's a character there's a person maybe it could be Lana who is just so intensely wanting somebody to love that she's actually scaring people off you know which is actually kind of a little bit more of a sad kind of thing you know i love the thrill of the rush maybe i'll go out tonight we can paint the town in blue blue again there we go sneak up on you really quiet whisper am i what your heart desires i love 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 that imagery because that's something kind of very serial killery in like walking up to someone whispering in their ear it's very creepy you know but like the words that she says are, are you what my heart desires like are you gonna be this lover for me it's like so scary but it's great <laughs> You can see me drinking cherry cola, sweet serial killer. That's the, there's that imagery there. It's like the Dark Mountain Dew, you know, cherry cola, you know, all those kinds of things. Like, yeah, love it. Really great. Great lyrics, great metaphor, great story. And like, 
such a kind of fully fleshed, quite hooky song. That was like such a great discovery. I can't believe there's all these like amazing songs out there that I haven't heard from her that are so great. I really, really like them. I wish I could actually listen to them like on Spotify, you know. Obviously I only did six in this reaction. I was gonna do eight, but I'm ill, so you can have six. <laughs> So let me know what ones I've missed and I'll do a follow-up video listening to more of that unreleased stuff. If you want to check out my original aka Lizzie Grant reaction, it is here. And if you want to check out my ultraviolence reaction, it is here.